Hello and welcome along to Mondo Chalavet Movies. My name is John and this video is going to be my complete collection part 11. Now I've just done that one there. I'm going to link all the previous parts down below and uh, I'm doing this part here. So this part does feature quite a lot of uh, American releases as well which uh, do fit quite nicely on there but there's a lot of them actually that uh, ones with the smaller cases you tend to get a lot more uh, packed into the, the area that you get you know a lot less of the bigger boxes there. So first up is One Dark Night. Now this movie is in the Vault series and I did think about collecting the Vault series, but there's a lot of them in, in the ones I didn't really care for, if I'm honest. Uh, I, I thought, why? Why would they be in there? They don't, they're not appeal to me. This one does, actually. It doesn't feature a slipcover, unfortunately. I missed the boat with that one. But that's why I haven't put it in with the other um, Vault series, because they are they have got uh, slipcovers on, so this one would stick out like a sore thumb, to me anyway. So yes, yeah, so this movie is, uh, I think it takes place in a mausoleum and um, these people go into this mausoleum and this thing start happening. It's a pretty good movie actually, very low budget. Um, but this this vault series, I don't even know this vault thing is still going, actually this 88 volts because it seems to have just like stopped. But uh, yeah, it's not a bad film, but pick it up cheap if you can, that's One Dark Night. So moving on from 88 movies, although they do feature quite heavily and I do rate their stuff highly and uh, I'm a big fan of their, their releases. Uh, I've got some Severin coming up here and the first one here then Severin sometimes do release uh, stuff in, in the UK. So first up is the movie Vampiros Lesbos. I think that's how you pronounce it. And this is directed by Jess Franco or Yoda as he's known. And uh, if you wonder why that the sort of connection I'm keep saying with Jess Franco or Yoda is because when somebody was actually making the cast for Yoda they did use Jess Franco. As a, as a sort of guide for what Yoda should look like. Obviously, Yoda, uh, Jess Franco hasn't got the same ears. But um, if you do look for a picture of Jess Franco, you will see that um, there is the Yoda look. And also, Jess Franco does actually know about the whole link, even though he's, he's long gone now. But uh, it's, yeah, it's a quite a strange one that the whole, uh, if you, everyone wants to know who uh, was modeled, Yoda was modeled on, it's Jess Franco. And he's a director who directed a billion films. So this movie features Soledad Miranda and that's her there and unfortunately she was going to be a big star uh, I would say in these movies this was kind of her out, outbreak movies and she uh, was literally uh, on the way to um, go to a meeting to be uh, cast in some really good big uh, movies in the early 70s and she had died in a car crash actually so it was, it was unreal real, I think just after these movies were made that she didn't get to reach her full potential because to be honest she's the best thing about this movie. Yes it's very exploitational but I do think that uh, Jess Franco when he was kind of given some money and he, and he didn't make he has made some trash mind if you if you want to know about if you want to know about trashy movies go and check out Jess Franco's movies. There's a lot of Jess Franco's ones which are you know I've got a name to them but when you watch them they're just utter garbage. Uh, the, the the main one for me is Oasis of the Zombies. I've never met, the, that's the worst ever zombie film if you ever want to know what my opinion is. I would like to own it because it is so bad but I tell you what it would have to be as cheap as chips for me to pick it up. So that's Vampiros Lesbos and on the back of that is another movie called She Killed in Ecstasy which is kind of, I don't think it's a sequel but it's a kind of, it's, it's following, it's got the same actress in it and I think it's it's in the same style as that movie. And yes, it's another exploitational, um, you know, one of those one wow sort of ones that they made in the 70s. But it's such a shame that uh, this person died in a car crash when she was just about to go to a meeting so she could be put onto the next level. Who knows, I, I would imagine she would definitely have been a Bond girl, um, you know, at least, but wow, um, such a shame. But yeah, these movies, they're okay, they're not brilliant, but you know, if you want something that's, uh, that's one of the better Jess Franco movies, and there's not that many around for me, uh, that's them. So next up is a previously banned video nasty, Bloody Moon. Now this is another Jess Franco movie, and to be honest, I do prefer this this than the other two that I've mentioned. And if you want it, the, like I say, Jess Franco is very divisive. You can either love him or hate him. Some people like the fact that like like his really bad films. I personally, that, there's, there's a line that I can I can't hold past in his movies because they're a little bit uh, wow. You know, this this is the movie. But anyway, this is one of the better ones, and uh, yeah, it is quite violent. Obviously, that's why it was uh, was banned or put on the list. Probably, I think this is the original cover. So yeah, so this cover. Another thing with the banned movies, when they saw a cover, it might have been a Disney movie, but it had featured a chainsaw, it would have been instantly taken away. Wow. Maybe I'm over-egging it a bit there. Yeah, so Bloody Moon. 
Next up is The Killing of America. I've talked about this movie before. This is what I would call a shockumentary, but I would say this is the best shockumentary I've seen. There's not many out there, if I'm honest. So it does go a little bit into the Mondo territory of like real life murders, but these were things that were caught on like like news cameras and other things you probably wouldn't have seen on the news, but there would have been, uh, you know, the news uh, camera, uh, news reports would have cut off by this point, but they've got like a lot of um, like like hyper violent stuff in it. It's got some autopsy scenes. It's got quite a lot of, um, there is a lot of brutality in here. I couldn't believe it when it came out uh, uncut in the UK. And also it's got a longer cut on here as well, which wasn't un which was unseen, it's a Japanese version. So yeah, so um, I haven't watched this, I've watched this loads of times on a VHS. But I haven't seen it on the the Blu-ray again. I was actually asking my wife if she would want to see it, and she's she's sort of on the fence with it. She doesn't know she likes things about real crime. Um, we we'll watch them th type of things on the TV all the time. I've seen some really bad stuff in them them documentaries. Uh, but this one here, I don't know if she would um, go to it. But I said, well, just try it out and see what you think. So she's still on the fence. Probably been on the fence for about the last three years. So that's a Killing of America. Next up is a strange film. It's called The Manson Family. Now this is directed by Jim Van Beber. Now he directed quite a few movies and it's, it's very low budget, but the, the thing about this movie, and I'm trying to remember there's a sort of story behind it. So I seem to recall there's a little bit of a story behind this movie. I think it was gonna come out and then it was gonna be pulled immediately. So I, was, I picked one up without knowing that. And I don't know if it's still available. I don't know anything about it. I think there was some kind of problems with it. I mean, yeah, it is quite uh, explicit in what it shows. I know Jim Van Beber, is very unapologetic in his filmmaking and he's, he's such a crazy character and I know and I don't think it's on here but I will try and link it down below if I can find it online uh, Jim Van Beber has a really bad um, grudge with the the, the man who uh, runs Code Red uh, films and I think he's called I can't remember his name but I think he's like a one-man operation and he's he's upset uh, Jim Van Beber by releasing a movie of his probably this movie and uh, he's ranting and raving on this phone or this recorded message to him. It's it's really good actually because he goes in. He's insane on this phone about what he's done to him. Bill, I think he's called this fellow who owns Code Red. I know a lot of people talk about Bill and the fact of him being a bit slow to release stuff. But anyway, um, so that's a Manson film. I did like it. Um, it's much better than I thought it was going to be because Jim Van Beber's films are quite low budget. So yes, Manson family. I can see. I don't know if you can still get that. Next up from um, Severin is Dr. Butcher, MD. Now this is Zombie Holocaust. And one of the best things about this is it comes with, it was at the cinema when you went in there, they would hand you a free sick bag. And actually what they've done is they've recreated that sick bag in this release. So there you go. So that, that's a brilliant touch that. I love when they put stuff like that in, into, um, it does say it features a free bath bag. So yeah, so it's got zombie, It's I think it's got two cuts of the movie in here, and I think that uh, Dr. Butcher MD is like the sort of different, it's like the American title for this one. I think the, the Europe got zombie holocaust. It do, it's Dr. Butcher MD kind of more represents this movie. It's quite brutal as well, and it's uncut, and obviously uncut over here as zombie holocaust. Uh, but I do prefer the, the Dr. Butcher uh, cut, if I've got to say, because I think it uh, it just plays a little bit better. So yeah, Dr. Butcher MD. And if you'd want to be sick while you're watching a film, if I'm watching some it, uh, I can put that on one. I can just get that bag out corner. So next up is my first ever subscriber mail on my channel, way back when. And it's from my good friend, Yuha Yulin. And it is Women Chasing, Woman Chasing the Butterfly of Death. And it's as crazy as it sounds. Now he sent me this over and he said, I don't know if you like it. So I had a great time in this movie, actually. It is so bizarre. It's un unbelievable, actually, the, the things in here. It's quite hard to explain as well. Um, it's one of those movies you just got to watch and I thought it was it was really good very engaging very um, avant-garde and I had a great time with it I've got to admit but when I try to explain it to somebody or I try to talk about bits in it it just it just sounds more bizarre than it actually is but it's still crazy I do urge anybody if you can get your hands on it uh, to watch this movie I'm so so pleased to receive this in the subscriber mail because uh, I never heard of it before and uh, I wouldn't even know it existed if it wasn't for you haul So thanks very much, you haul I really appreciate that. That's Woman Chasing the Butterfly of Death. Next up is another Mondo Macabre release. It is A Lizard in a Woman's Skin. This is an early Lucio Fulci movie. And I've got to, got to say, it's, it's really good, actually. It's one of those ones where you see, 
you realise that Lucio Fulci was not just a really like a sort of out and out go merchant, although he had tons of go in his movies. This is quite a clever giallo, and it's also uh, very stylistically done. Um, and I remember watching it quite recently actually because I was going through uh, Lucio Fulci's stuff and re-watching it and having a much better time than I thought I used to have. I did have this one on DVD and I bought it on Blu-ray because I liked it that much. The Blu-ray looks absolutely amazing by the way. And it's got a lot of extras on here and it's uh, it's got a new HD transfer and it's probably the one to get if you want to get this uh, this really obscure um, Lucio Fulci movie. I think it's from about 1971. And yeah, you could see he was going places with this, but you wouldn't know where he would have been going to. But I do think that um, I would love to see a Lucio Fulci box set. Can you imagine that? Uh, maybe featuring 10 or so movies. It would be absolutely amazing to get this this type of movie. Now, if you went in the sort of 4K realm with this stuff, I think you could get a decent... Four if you see a Blu-ray that looks really good, you would imagine that they could get a, a good 4K scan of it. So aesthetically, this film looks that good. I would love to see it in 4K. So that's Lizard in a Woman's Skin. Now all these ones coming up are probably uh, region locked to region A and this is where I got my uh, region free player and I've never looked back since and I've got to admit if you want to just check out them stuff that you can't get over here or you don't get a good version over here or it's un it's uncut uh, on these ones and it's cut here then um, although the, the, a lot of them are coming out uncut over here which is quite which is great I'm all for that um, so this is one of the reasons why I got this uh, this multi-region play and as soon as I did I started to get more, uh, sort of branch out my picking up these horror titles I've always been after. Either I've seen them uh, on a cut version in the UK or a dodgy VHS, uh, but these are ones that I wanted to end up uh, getting on a, a really good format. So first up is My Bloody Valentine. Now this is the original release and I've got to say the picture quality is absolutely stunning. I think it's been re-released uh, again because this went massively out of print. It was going for like ridiculous money even though I think I got it quite cheap for about a tenner. I can't, I can't believe that when I was telling people I got this like ultra cheap a tenner, 15 quid and uh, people were uh, prepared to pay maybe the hundred, hundred plus pounds for it. I don't think it's worth that obviously. But yes, good special edition here and uh, it's one of those movies that I do think that should be available by the likes of uh, 88 or um, Arrow should release the likes of My Bloody Valentine because I think it's a really good film. The remake's not that bad either. Next up is The Legend of Hell House. I remember this one uh, petrifying me as a kid. Uh, and it, di it did, I could see the bits which scared me actually. There was one bit I was looking for in here where this mantle place came to life, which wasn't in here, so I must be getting it mixed up with another film. But I do remember this one. I think it's the sound effects more than anything else. I remember seeing this on, on TV. And thinking wow this is uh, pretty scary actually I think this has come around about the same time as the Exorcist so maybe it had Exorcist influences influences on it which meant that um, these movies are more realistic when they're dealing with uh, sort of like ghosts and demons and poltergeists and um, the paranormal than the movies that you would get that were like before that which were kind of like hokey so that's the legend of Hell House next up is Psycho 2 this is the um, Scream Factory release, and I, I must admit, uh, I do like Psycho 2. I think it's a great film. I love Psycho. Psycho, is, for me, is untouchable. I think it's just so clever. I like the fact that it's kind of two movies rolled into one. This movie here, it's, it could have fell flat in its face, but it did really um, sort of take the, the journey of uh, Norman Bates to, to the next step. And the storyline progresses in a really good way as well. You can see it, it seems more like a, a proper official sequel than a cash -in, which I think everyone thought it was at the time. So when it came out, there was a lot of uh, people sort of humming and hawing, saying there's no way they should make a sequel to that movie. But here it is. And I do think the sequel's got a bit uh, crazy as they went along, but um, I think the furthest I will go is probably Psycho 3. Don't think I'll touch Psycho 4 with a barge ball, although I have seen it and I didn't like it at all. It was it was a ridiculous idea to have Norman Bates, Anthony Perkins, pretend to go back to do a prequel to Norman Bates and all he did was dye his hair and he tried to look younger than he was uh, 30 years ago. Wow, yeah, it's that bad. Okay, so that's Psycho 2. Next up is, oh, if you talk about this movie, you always talk about the ending. And the fact that I'm going to talk about this US release that hasn't been released over here, fully uncut, and I'm going to talk about the amazing ending of the movie. You've probably even sussed out what it is if you know about this movie. And of course, it's Sleepaway Camp. This is the um, Screen Factory release. And wow, this film is, I think this film is brilliant. Uh, I love it. And though Sleepaway, 2, Sleepaway Camp 2 and 3, I do quite like. I haven't seen any 
plus pasta. I know that this uh, character came back into it, I think, in Sleepaway Camp 4. Uh, well, I think there's like a remake of this one, believe it or not. Um, but the movie itself is is great. It's one of the it's it's kind of like a play on Friday the Thirteenth type sort of thing and all that. But uh, the ending, wow! You will never see a more great, st strange, s scary, and bizarre ending. And I'm not going to spoil it by saying anything about it. But when you see it, I think it makes it even more. Uh, alarming with the sound effect they use and anyone who's seen this will know exactly what I'm going to talk about when I talk about when I talk about the sound effect on that scene wow highly highly recommended uh, I don't know if, like I say these I bought these movies years ago so I don't know if they're going to be um, still in print but if you can't get this in print please somebody like 88 pick this movie up give it a good release over here because it's a movie that you've got to see and you've got to see it for that ending wow next up is one of my personal movies my favorite movies of all time it is the video dead it's either it's coupled up with television now television is a good movie but it's it, I, I did get it just for this it's a double feature from screen factory and i think they should do more of these in the uk actually because uh, it's a great way to pick up some some good movies that deserve to see the light of day but maybe they wouldn't get a standalone release this movie is begging for a uk release from the likes of arrow or 88 it is ultra entertaining. You can see it for free on YouTube and it's in a good picture quality. Actually, it's probably stuck from here. Uh, I can watch this movie time and time and time again. It's it's just one story of this, this haunted TV gets delivered to somebody and these uh, zombies come out of it. Every time you turn the TV on, these zombies come out of it. Um, it is ridiculous, of course it is, but uh, wow, what a film. I think it was the video cover that got me when I saw this in the, uh, in the video library. I immediately got it out and then I realized it's not it's not a high budget movie it is like cheap and cheesy but I realized that I just thought that I just enjoy this film and I think this is one of the movies that I first saw when I thought this is so bad or so low budget I shouldn't like it but I do and I think that's this was the movie that started me off on my sort of a uh, craze or, or liking of movies that are so bad they're good or so cheap that most people would say, I'm not watching that, the special effects are, are rubbish, but I can say that, yeah, they are, but I tell you what, you'll be so enjoyed if you just put that on one side and just watch it and just say, you know, it is what it is, but you'll have a great time with it. So that's highly recommended. Television is pretty good, actually, but this is the movie for me, The Video Dead. It has to get released in the UK. It will be a day one purchase for me. Imagine that in 4K, although I don't think it would look good in 4K because I don't think the elements are there. So that's The Video Dead in television. Next up is Humanoids from the Deep. I talked about this in my last uh, video, or the part ten. This is uh, the the US one, and I, I just I've kept this. I don't need to keep this because, for me, the uh, the UK one, which is over there, the UK UK Humanoids from the Deep, it does trump this one. It's got all the extras on there, on there, and also it's the picture quality on here is not as good as that one over there. But I've just kept it because I love that cover. It's one of the uh, my standout covers for. Um, for movies uh, from this age from the early 80s so that's humanized from the deep so next up if you like star wars then you're gonna love or hate this movie there was a lot of uh, cushions when star wars came out in the late 70s early 80s that were uh, trying to get into this sort of um the whole sci-fi thing and then they came out and some of them were actually quite good and some were just really awful now this is so bad it's good and it is star crash now this features Caroline Monroe, which is which is brilliant. That that's a and also David Hasselhoff, believe it or not. Uh, this is before he decided to get drunk and roll around with a, with a hamburger. So weirdly enough, this has been released in the UK, and I d it, this was unreleased for a long time. But it's one of those ones where if you like, if so bad it's good. Star Crash is the kind of antithesis of that, especially when it comes to Star Wars ripoffs. You'll see all the, the Star Wars ripoff things in here. Um, it is absolutely stupid beyond belief, but for some reason it's really, really highly uh, watchable. So that's Star Crash. And like I say, you can pick it up over here. I don't think it's too expensive as well. I don't know which company have picked it up over here, but uh, yeah, you will have a good time with it uh, for the wrong reasons. Next up is I Spit on Your Grave. This is the Australian release, I believe. Yes, Australian, this is Region B. This is fully uncut, and I got this gifted by my good friend, uh, John Hall, Hallgoss73, who is 
probably going to be making an appearance on my channel very soon. He's got some time coming off, and if I can get my shifts to line up with his time off, then it's good to go. And he's we talked about it actually over um over text message, so I think this is gonna work out. So this would be great to get him over. So anyway, uh John gave me this uh, fully uncut one. Now I'm pleased to get it fully uncut, but to be honest, when it ever comes up to that scene, I've just flicked through it. I don't have no interest in watching it. I know what happens. And um, I do like it. I do like it as a movie, mainly because the bad guys are so evil and so horrible, and they get it. So I think that's why I like it. I like these type of exploitational movies, which are so, um, you know, like really over the top. I do like them like this, in the Last House on the Left, but I only really like them because of the, the way how bad the bad guys are. That's that's what draws me into these movies. So if you get a really sick and depraved bar guy, then I'm in. That that'll do me, and that's why I can get through most of these movies. Yeah, I do know they're a really tough watch. Like I say, I know it's I know where it is. I fast forward it and I just go past that. But yeah, it's not a bad movie. I've got no interest at all in any of the other ones. Uh, the remakes, the uh, the sequel to this, it doesn't interest me at all. I've watched the remake of I Spit in Your Grave, the 2010, I think it was didn't like it at all i think to these days these days are of its the movie of its time and they were made probably just a shock and they did so it's been done you don't need to go there again i don't understand why these days they've got to make an exploitational movie like 2010's i spit in your grave probably it's probably only using the title and it's going to get people interested in it and i don't know the uk one's cut anyway but i've seen the i've got the american uncut one and to be honest i didn't like it at all so there you go so that's i spit in your grave Next up is The Toolbox Murders. Now this is also available on 88's um, Slasher Collection series. So obviously that's in that collection, so I could have got rid of this, but actually this uh, one here from Blue Underground uh, is absolutely, the, the picture quality here is, is stunning. So I'm keeping it for that reason. So if I ever wanted to watch it, I don't really watch the 88 version, 88 films version. I watch um, this one here. I don't think I would ever watch the remakes of these movies because I like them for what they are from that time and I like a 70s movie and I, d I think when you do it in the 90s or the 2010s they just don't they don't have the same thing for me that they come across as really unnecessary so that's the toolbox murders next up is the prowler this is another sort of one of those um, Friday the 13th killer on the loose this one's got a quite a good uh, storyline it would actually this is another one that uh, i used to see in the video library all the time i think in the uk it was called rosemary's killer i believe and uh, i did rent it out a lot of times and this this is the american version the american title is the prowler this is from blue underground again so to me these are ones when i see movies like this uh, i can honestly say i can see uh, blue underground releasing these on 4k because if i got them in the library they usually try and keep them in the library and they do try and release all the ones that are coming out in 4K, which look spectacular. And I have no doubt that if they did release these ones, they would look spectacular as well. So, uh, yeah, that's the Prowler. It's a, it's a decent movie, actually. It's got some really good go in it as well. I think that's why it fell foul of the senses. I don't know if it got banned, but it might be one of the ones that was kind of quietly withdrawn. So, yeah, the Prowler. Next up is one of my favourite films in the, the zombie trope, and it is The Living Dead at the Manchester Morgue. I would love to see this on 4K. It's from 1974, I think it's a Spanish movie. And for, it's another one of those movies when you watch it, and it, it's it's pretty, it's not overly gory, it's pretty tame, if I'm honest. I think this one fell foul of the senses as well, because it's obviously is a zombie film, and I think there's some gut munching in it. And I remember that this one just looks spectacular. So for me, this would be day one purchase on uh, Blue Underground 4K, if, they, if ever did it. Um, but I, I just love this movie. There's another one that um, you think... I don't know why I like this movie so much, but I do. So that's Living Dead at Manchester Morgan. Great title as well. So the last one on this shelf is Torso. Another Blue Underground release. I would love this one to come out. This is like kind of a uh, giallo. And it stars uh, Susie Kendall, who was, who was getting into these, more of these, like, she's in quite a lot of these um, 70s sort of exploitational gore fest slasher giallo movies. And... This, this film here has, come, I'm sure it's come out by, I'm going to say Shameless released it, but I do know Shameless, I'm, I never trust their, their releases for being really good, although The Psychic, that uh, the Lucio Fulci film to put out is absolutely stunning, man. it's the best one I think you'll see of that. So this movie here, Torso, um, it's got, it's really over the top, it's really gory, it's got a great scene in it, it's by Sergio Martino as well, which is another big selling point for me, he's a brilliant director, still going as well. 
Well, he's still alive. I don't know if he still makes movies. And there's there's a scene in here. I'm not going to go to. I'm not going to any spoilers at all. If I say this, there's a scene in here where there's this Suzy Kendall and the, these girls are in this uh, this house, and I think some of the girls get, or, or girl gets killed, and Suzy Kendall finds herself hiding underneath the table, away from the killer. So as as she's she's there trying to sort of keep herself together because of this uh, trying to keep out the way of being seen, this killer brings some body right next to her and starts sewing it up in front of her. So she's got to kind of lie there with this body being sewn up next to her and trying to keep it all together. So that's a that's an amazing scene. It's one of my favourite scenes in a horror movie actually. So yeah, so yeah, you can get in the UK, but um, this is the Blue Underground one, and these are ones that I would love to see 4K from uh, Blue Underground being uh, put out you know something in the next couple of years okay so i'll be coming back to these shelves uh try and get all of these ones done in it's going to take a long time so if you ever want to uh, say what's on your shelf and do a shelf run through i am doing one but it's probably going to be the longest series you'll ever see you'll see everything as it, as it comes together but wow will it take a long time i didn't realize how long it would take and i do want to talk a little bit about these movies but not actually go too much into detail because it would just last forever Okay, so thanks very much for watching. You take care, and I'll see you on the next video. Cheers.